fixed cost outlay. Okay, good, good attempt. Yeah, anybody else? What is payback period? Yes, Mr. Fafana. Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, I think, you know, the time it takes the, 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 the company, you know, to recover what, he, uh, what it's already invested into a business. Okay. Good. Yeah, good. yeah. Good. The time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something good. like that. Good. Yeah, of course. Uh, Mohammed, I don't like your something like that. Huh? <laughs> Something okay, like sorry. Sure. sorry, sorry. <laughs> oh, no, that's all right. Yeah, so I mean, both of you are right. Um, so simply, payback period is the period to pay back initial investment. So this is the period it takes for an organization to recoup its initial investment. If, for example, an organization invests 100,000 to buy a machinery for production, how long will it take to recover that 100,000? Simple. Okay. So it's a, um, it's a, uh, uh, how to call it, uh, a very, very uh, simple method uh, of uh, screening projects, uh, but. Its main problem is um, it's not conclusive on its own. We usually use it for uh, project screening, for initial screening, and it must not be used all by itself. For example, you cannot take an investment uh, appraisal decision because you have checked its payback period and its payback period happens to be the best. Okay, you don't only depend on the payback period, but you use other methods also, okay? So the payback period, when we are calculating payback period, we use profits before depreciation, which is the same as cash flow, okay? Um, we look at the advantages of payback period. Yes, Mr. Favano. One advantage is it enhances liquidity. That means your choice is always on projects that pay back quickly, and then that means there will not be any liquidity issue. Yes, someone wanted to say something? Yes, um, I think the, it's not presented on the big screen. You know? Sorry? Um, uh, yeah, uh, for on in my own side here, around my own side here, I'm only I'm not. It is not been presented on the on on the screen. Okay. So okay. I don't know. I'm only seeing Ibrahim Ature on the on the screen, you know. Is that the same for everyone? Are you not seeing my, my PowerPoint? Of course we are seeing it. Mohammed, they need to check your computer though. No, I'm I, I'm using my phone, honestly. I'm only seeing Ibrahim Ature. I, if you are using uh, your phone, if you are using your phone, uh, click where you see my name. There might be two lambing for us. If you are on the other one, select the other one. Oh yeah, you're right, man. I get it now. Is that I, I mistakenly yeah, mistakenly uh so you're fine now, you're fine now, okay, fine. So let's look at the, the advantages of payback period, okay? Payback period, like I said, it's a simple uh, method. It looks at uh, how quickly uh, a particular investment uh, uh, pays back, how quickly you are able to recoup the initial investment. So because you, your selection is always based on how quickly you get money, so it enhances what? Liquidity. Okay, there is always, um, uh, how to call it, uh, liquidity in any uh, project you choose. Okay, so it's a good method for initial, you know, project screening. Of course, like I said, we must not always rely on it. So it's um, uh, short-term forecasts are likely to be more reliable because, um, uh, uh, how to call it, um, liquidity is what it emphasizes, okay? The calculation is, of course, quick and simple, and uh, it's, an very, it's a very, very uh, easily understood topic. 
So the disadvantages, um, because it pays back quickly, the decision will be to go for a project that pays back quickly, but then there are some projects that would not pay back quickly, but then there will be huge cash flows after the payback period. So what happens is this method ignores such projects, okay? So we will see in one of the examples that we're going to do. Okay, it also ignores cash flows after the end of the payback period and ignores timing of cash flows within the payback. Okay, so because it's not discounted, the normal payback period is not discounted, it does not consider time value of money. Okay, so, um, what's time now? Okay, 16.49, we can do this in 10 minutes. And this one, in fact, is discussion. After discussing this, then we can uh, break for salad. And then uh, when we come back, we can do one or two questions on payback period. Okay, so this is a work example, so let's discuss it. Um, it says, look at the figures below for two mutually exclusive projects. Mutually exclusive projects means only one could be executed, okay? we could not undertake both of them at the same time, okay? Due to uh, maybe limiting factors, you know, um, capital limiting factor, or maybe due to lack of, uh, you know, material uh, or adequate labor and stuff like that, okay? So mutual exclusive projects are projects that cannot be executed at the same time. For example, project P and project Q. So you have to take, you have to choose only one. Okay, so the capital cost of asset, okay, which is the initial outlay is 60,000 for each of them. Uh, profits before depreciation, okay. What are profits before depreciation? And what are profits after depreciation? What's the difference between these two? You have, you'll be seeing this terminology a lot in uh, decision making. Profits before depreciation and profits after depreciation. What are each of them and what's the difference? I think profit before depreciation is the gross profit. And profit, profit, the profit before depreciation is gross profit. Do you agree to that, class? Um, no, I think profit before depreciation is cash flow. And profit after depreciation is called accounting profit, I think. Accounting profit, good. Good. Omar, uh, yes. gross profit is only considering variable sales versus variable cost. That's mm. gross profit. Gross profit is what? Sales, less what? COS, cost of sales. Yeah, cost of sales. Cost exactly. of sales all vary with the sales. So that's why they say cost of sales. Sales and cost of sales. Yes. So gross profit is, you know, clean profit, direct profit. Okay? But if you talk about uh, 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 how to call it, um, profit before depreciation, no. There are lots of costs that you put into consideration other than like after your, after your gross profit, you look at um, admin costs, manufacturing costs, and all those costs. You put all those into consideration, okay? Uh, just like Mohamed Lighty said, when you talk about depreciation, profit before depreciation, amortization, and uh, all notional costs, uh, profits that are kind of clean, well, kind of clean because they don't uh, include any national cost. So profit before depreciation is always equal to cash flow and the profit after considering depreciation, amortization, and so on and so forth is what we call accountant's profit, okay? And accountant's profit is usually profit that is kind of not very, very, very clean because there are lots of assumptions that are put into consideration, okay? Like the way depreciation is calculated, uh, people calculate it differently, the way people determine the useful life of depreciation, the way they determine the rate of depreciation and so on and so forth, you know? In some organizations, they could say the useful life of their motor vehicles is 10 years, while same vehicle, in a different organization could say the useful life is only four years. Useful life 10 years and useful life four years, they're different when it comes to depreciation cost. 
a useful life of four years will have more depreciation cost than a useful life of 10 years. And the more depreciation cost you have, the lower your profit, because depreciation is a cost. It's going to reduce your profit, isn't it? The lower profit you have, the more your profit is going to increase, because depreciation will be deflated. Okay? So this is why I say profit after depreciation and any other notion of cost is accountant's profit. Okay? So always take note of it. So when we are doing, when we are answering questions on payback period, net present value method, IRR, we always use cash flow. It's only the accounting rate of return whereby we use accountant's profit. Okay, take note of that. So, uh, so we have capital cost of 6060 for both project P and Q. We have profits before depreciation, which is cash flow, year one, year two, year three. For project P, look at it. 20,000, 30,000, 40, 50. So it's going up. The longer the project stays, the more cash it generates. But look at Project Q. Project Q is the opposite. Okay? Um, in, the first, in the first years, look at it. In the first year, for example, 50,000 profit. Second year, 20,000. But look at what happened. After that, it's like almost the, the project is, is, is dead. 5,000, 5,000, very small, okay? So when you look at this, week of the project, without reading through anything, week of these two projects is gonna pay back quick. Q. Uh, it's yeah, project I will go into Q. Q, yeah. Okay, naturally P is going to pay back quickly. Why is Q going to pay back quickly? Because in the fourth year, it is paying 50,000. Okay, 50,000. And what's the initial cost? The initial cost is 60,000. 60,000? Look at that. 50,000 from 60,000. You've almost recouped everything. Okay? So, in other words, Project P is going to pay back in week year. Project Q is going to pay back in week year. In the second year. In the second year. In the second year. Good. In the second year. Thank you. So, on the flip side, if you look at project Q, sorry, project P, okay, project P, look at it. When is it going to pay back? In which year? The third year. And the third year, okay. Project Q is going to pay, pay back in the second year, while project P is going to pay back in third year. So if you have to choose these projects based on based on a, a payback period only, which project are you going to choose to, to implement? Project Q. Project Q. Project Q. Yeah. Project Q. But look at it. Project, project Q. Pro, project Q is going to pay back in second year. Project, project P is going to pay back in the third year. Okay, let's not calculate the months yet. But after the second year in Project Q, uh, what are the profits that you're going to gain if you had taken Project Q? What are the total profits that you get? After the payback period, what are the total profits that you're going to get? Let's, let's not include second year. Do you mean the second year? 15. <laughs> Fifteen thousand. Fifteen thousand. Okay, we're going. To, yeah. We're going to. We're going to. You know, excluding the the the, the part of second year, but uh, just just after the second year only, fifteen thousand. But look at P. Look at P. Let's let's just ignore the third year. Just after the third year, the fourth and the fifth year, how much? Hundred and ten thousand. Hundred and ten thousand. Can you compare? Hundred and ten thousand. Yeah. Can you compare one hundred and ten thousand to fifteen thousand? They they are way off. Wow. So if you choose Project Q because it pays back quickly, uh, if you don't mind, you're gonna make mistakes because you are going to lose the cash flows that will come after the payback period for Project P, which is hundred and ten thousand compared to fifteen thousand. Okay, so that's why I said 
the payback period is only an initial screening method. Okay? So if you have to calculate, if you have to calculate the payback period for project Q, how are you going to calculate it? We know that project Q is going to pay back in the second year, but we want how many years and how many months? How are we going to calculate that? How many years, how many months? How many years, how many months? Okay. I think we need a formula for that. Sorry, can you say that again? I said I think we need a formula for that. Yes, um, we need I, formula for that. But what formula? Do you need any complicated formula? You need. You can just uh, use common sense easily without yeah, doing um, anything. Mr. Fafana? Yuma, 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 you want to try? Yeah, let me try. Okay, yes. I think it's going to be the amount left to recover in the year two okay so how much is left to recover in year two no everything is recovered in year two yes but what i'm saying is in year one we're going to recover fifty thousand, isn't it yes okay what remains after fifty thousand? Ten thousand remains okay so we need ten thousand from what Ten thousand from the twenty thousand. From the twenty thousand, so yes. that's half. That's half of twenty thousand, isn't it? So what is half in terms of months? In terms of months, it's six. Six. So simply, do you need a calculator, Yuma? No. <laughs> Excellent. So is you need ten thousand in year two, okay? So that you can calculate the the remaining months that you're going to use in year two. So that's 10,000. Out of the year two's whole figure is 20,000. So that's 10 over 20, which is half. Half of 12 months is six months. So that means uh, project Q is going to pay back one year, six months. Simple. So what about project P? Project P. Yeah, so yes, Mohamed, you, have, you want to have a go? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I think pro uh, Project P will take two years, three months. Okay, how? Just so without using calculator. Just tell us without using calculator. Yeah, because like the cost, the initial cost was 60,000. Uh huh. And um, year one, uh, they recovered 20,000, and year two, 30,000. Together, that will be 50,000. So the okay. remaining 10,000. Okay. So that will go to year three, and year three it was forty thousand. Okay. So forty thousand, the remaining ten thousand, that is forty over ten. We have one third. So one third is going to be three months of the year. Exactly. I think so. Exactly. So 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 uh, in fact, it's ten over four. It's not one third. It's ten over four. You understand? That's one fourth. That's quarter. One fourth is quarter, and quarter of a year is three months. Oh, oh yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Months, isn't it? Okay. So uh, let's break here. Um, let's break here. It's two minutes past five. Shall we come back at quarter past five, please? Shall we come back at quarter past five? Okay. Let's come back at All quarter right. past five. Okay. Thank you. Yeah.